All right, welcome to the live stream, everyone. Here with me is Dan Frio. Uh, and what we're gonna do is answer your home buying questions. And Dan eventually is gonna show us what it says on his shirt. And I think it's gonna reveal a lot about, uh, it's gonna explain a lot of things about Dan here, maybe that- uh, Who works, <laughs> um, So what we're gonna do is cover your home buying questions. So leave those in the chat and then we're gonna answer them. Um, Trevor's already here, already bringing in the avocado. We got the um, guac. We got I the hate guac. It. <laughs> it's just an avocado. It's not even guac yet. It's got to be yeah, mashed no, up. It's got to have some onions it's and garlic. Fresh. Yeah, it's, it's fresh. fresh. Uh, let us know what where are you looking to buy? Uh, what state are you looking to buy? What city um, are you looking to buy in? And what challenges are you facing? Um, Avery's in here as well. First time tuning into a live stream. Um, thanks so much for being here, Avery. Uh, and Trevor said, yeah, pre-processed guac uh, yeah. is what we have Thank right you, Trevor. now. Thank you, Trevor. My man. So let us know where you're at. Um, that way we can give you a quick little shout out. Um, Dan's, we're, I'm going to turn it over then to Dan to go into what's happening with uh, economics, what's going on with mortgage rates, so you can get an idea of as you're shopping for homes or maybe you're not ready to put in an, uh, an application yet, you can get an idea of what's happening with mortgage rates. And then um, we're going to talk about a new uh, part of our website now that is a grant finder. So we have three conventional loan grants. So they're fully forgivable. You don't have to make any payments on them. There's no interest on them. Uh, and you can sell or refinance at any time. And the grants go up to $10,000. So it allows you to see which grant you qualify for um, and shows you all the math with those. So we're going to dive into that as well. Um, and I really think it's going to be an easy way for you to see what kind of... Uh, grants you can qualify for. Um, we have Derek in here as well. Angels buying in uh, St. Charles. Um, Central Mass. Amanda, thanks for being here. Uh, Anastasia, hi from upstate New York. Um, Gene Inspirational, hello from Dallas. Uh, Boss Life Trucker, Miami. Um, I'll continue throwing these up on screen, so feel free to keep putting those down there. Um, Dan, what in the world is going on with mortgage rates, economics, the whole deal? It's all the Fed, and I hate. I feel like I do an. I when I used to do my economic show every morning, I'd kind of go over, you know, what's going on. There was always something juicy. Now I feel like it's just what the what the Fed said or, or heard today. That's basically it. When the, you you know you hear rumbling rumblings about you know inflation going up. Well, you see the stock market crumble and you see mortgage rates spike. But then if you have the next day, you have a little bit of rumblings on the downside saying, OK, inflation's coming down. Well, you, then you have the markets rally, rally, rally. So this week uh, we had two things come out. Well, one thing so far and then tomorrow we have another thing. The Federal Reserve first. First off, let me explain what the, why the Federal Reserve was created. And I'm going to do this as fast as I can. They were created for two reasons. Those two reasons are for job stability. They're trying to make you know as many people being able to work as they can and price stability, aka inflation. Okay, their whole focus right now is on inflation. And I get it. So what we've seen this week, um, what they monitor is they monitor jobs, because that's the, the full employment piece. And then they monitor uh, a lot of the inflation things. One is the CPI. And one is what's called the PPI. So the CPI, what you need to understand is that the C in the front of it is consumer inflation. The PPI, basically what that means, it's producer or manufacturer's inflation. So this week we had the consumer inflation number it tick up one tenth. Um, and the market app actually absorbed that pretty good. Uh, there was a lot of defense there and so forth. And then now the PPE, uh, the producer prices are coming out tomorrow. But one of the things that here's what I don't get. You have a lot of channels saying the Federal Reserve is not, they're not going to reduce rates. Unfortunately, even Federal Chairman Powell during his, some of his speeches this week said the data, we're not looking for data to come in much, much better. We're just looking for its consistency. So I watch and I've watched many interviews with people. I, I go on to uh, webinars with, with uh, financial experts and so forth. Basically, most of them are predicting a June uh, basically pivot for the, the Federal Reserve. And that is also being represented in the uh, basically in the markets. So will it happen for sure, 100%? Don't know, but that's the expectations. So tomorrow when the when the uh, producer inflation numbers come out and the jobs reports numbers come out, like I said, everything is data dependent right now. And I can't believe how much data dependent things are, but all you'd have to, all the, basically the easiest way I can say this is check out my channel every morning for about five minutes. You're gonna learn everything you need to know about what's going on with mortgage rates and the whys. That's probably the easiest way to explain it other than you guys having to watch the news 24 seven, kind of like I do. Sweet. So, yep. 
there, there's just stability right now in rates and they are ticking down. We haven't we haven't gone into the seven percent range since last week. And I don't think we're going to get there. Uh, you know, we might get there once or twice again, but I think we're going to be in the sixes for a while. Um, let's see. We got Sebastian and Fall, Falls Church market is hot. Uh, with a lot of teas. Hey, hey, Sebastian, um, be careful what you post on YouTube because a lot of people don't like you telling the truth and the housing market isn't <laughs> crashing. So be very careful. I love this dog. Is that what kind of dog is that? Uh, it's got blue eyes. Um, David, uh, hey, just bought a new build in Fort Pierce, Florida. My loan officer convinced me to pay for a floating rate fee in case it comes down. Um, fingers crossed. A floating rate fee. Uh, what are you, are you familiar with? Hey, you might that? want to reach out to us or email me your loan estimate. Let's see if we can get you that rate without a loan fee float down. Just a thought. Yeah, I'm not not familiar with that really being charged with a lot of lenders. Um, it's a, a Weimaraner. That's pretty cool. Um, cool. Let me see what other questions we have in here. Trevor, thank you for being here again. Um, you've been uh, pretty diligent on these lives. Uh, Worches Worchester? Worcester. How do we say that? Uh, County uh, 350 just applied for pre-approval today. Uh, anything catch your eye in the area for a first time buyer? Um, you know, let me go over here to, yes, did you have something? Trevor just hit it out of the ballpark. Kyle just created a website. You're gonna launch over to that now? Be a uh, great sure, introduction. We can. we can, I don't think that would be a qualifying area, but we can try it. Um, yeah, so do, 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 let me pull up the thing on here. Uh, cool. So we do have um, a new part of the website um, called a grant finder. And, you know, this is a big blank space here that I'm eventually going to put a video in, and it's not there. So um, we'll all work on that. Just uh, hot off the press, folks. He <laughs> called me this morning ecstatic. Yeah, just finished this today. So um, we have three conventional loan grants, and grants are different than down payment assistance. So down payment assistance, normally what you're going to run into is it's some kind of like second loan where you might get uh, money up front to help pay for your down payment or closing costs, but usually you have to pay it back either through monthly payments or a higher interest rate, um, or if you sell, you have to pay it back at a certain period of time. Um, so... A grant is fully forgivable. That money is entirely yours. And we have three different grant programs. And this is going to show you which ones you qualify for. Okay. So um, the way you can find this is you can go to winthehouseyoulove.com. Under tools, go to grant finder. All right. So we'll walk through a scenario. Um, and you, uh, Edson said, don't you have to meet certain income for grants? Yes. So that's all included in here. So let's say that we are just buying by ourselves. Okay. If you have a co-borrower, someone who's going to be on the loan with you, you just click this right here. So then for our credit score, let's go ahead and put in a 660 credit score. Now the minimum for all of these is going to be a 620. So you need a 620 and above because these are all conventional loans. Um, top Miami. Uh, thanks for the super chat. I'll get to that here in just a second. Once we're done with the, uh, the grants. Um, then you put in, are you a first time home buyer? So we're going to click yes here. Uh, and here are some areas that qualify. Now, this is based on where you currently live. Okay. Now, if you don't live in one of these areas, we do still have a grant that covers you. Um, but tons of areas that would qualify here. We have areas like Phoenix, Miami, Atlanta, Chicago, Baltimore, Detroit, St. Louis, uh, or Louis. I don't know which one we're going with there. Uh, New York City. You have Cleveland, Oklahoma City, Philadelphia, Memphis. Um, tons in Texas. Uh, Arlington, Washington, D.C. See. Okay. So we're going to say yes. Now, something that you have to do with uh, this grant program is put in a census geo ID. It's not as complicated as it sounds. I have three steps uh, to be able to do this. You simply put in your current address on the census geocoder. You look under the census tracks heading, and then it's going to show you something called a geo ID, just a list of a bunch of numbers. Um, I'm going to put in an example one that I know is on that list, okay? That way I don't give out somebody's address in here. Um, then you put in your annual pre-tax income, all right? So let's say uh, 65,000, put in where you're looking to buy. Um, let's see, we'll just do a random county here. Uh, and then the purchase price that you're looking at. 
So then what it's going to do is it's going to show you grants that match your profile that you could then apply for. All right. So again, all these grants, fully forgivable, zero repayment, and then you can sell and refinance at any time. So what it will show us is the three different uh, grant options we have available. We have one called a one plus that's a 1% down plus 2% grant. We have purchase plus that goes up to $5,250 and then home ready first, which is a $10,000 grant. So it shows us here now what grants we qualify for um, and then what grants we don't qualify for and why. So for instance, um, someone who fit this profile, uh, if they brought their score up from a 660 to a 680, they would all of a sudden be able to unlock this $10,000 home ready first grant and apply for that. Okay. Now something as well, as you can see, this person has income that's too high in this scenario. So what we can do is take a look at the county list. So maybe if you made 65,000, you wouldn't be able to buy an Allen County, but I can take a look at all these other counties I could apply in. So anything in here that's above $65,000, we could qualify for the one plus grant in. So I'm just going to pick uh, Warren County. Okay. So we can see all these options available to us. Um, then if we scroll down here, it shows us a different a cost estimate comparison between these different grants. Okay. So if we're looking at a $350,000 purchase price, a 97% loan to value, that's 3% down. Um, this is what the grants would look like. Now I'm going to remove a seller credit and I'll explain that here in a second. But let's look at the cost before the grant. So between all these programs, One Plus, Purchase Plus, and Home Ready First, we have a down payment, right? 3%, that's $10,500. We're estimating closing costs in here. Now, closing costs are not just what your lender charges. Closing costs mainly include things like your appraisal, um, your title costs, as well as recording fees. You also have an escrow account, things like taxes and homeowners insurance that are all included in there as well, okay? And closing costs usually are a lot more than people expect that they're going to be. So before the grant, you'd be looking at about $18,000, uh, just above $18,000 to be able to purchase a home with everything included. Now, one way you can reduce that is asking the seller for credit um, to help pay down closing costs. So Dan, how much do you think seller credit we might ask for in here? Usually a lot of people that we're seeing right now is 3%. So if we went all the way up to 3%, basically what we would be doing is when you go to offer for a home, you're negotiating and asking the seller to pay 3% of the purchase price towards your closing costs. Okay. So that would actually take, that would actually pay down more than our closing costs here. Um, so let's bring this down to about, uh, somewhere around here, 2.25%. All right. So before the grant, we would be paying just about what the down payment is. Now we can see with each one of these options, the grant that's being applied. And then some of these also have an appraisal credit for $500 and the home ready first one has an or a home warranty credit for up to $500 as well. So that take the, took the cost down from $10,500 to buy a house down to $3,500 for the one plus $4,700 for purchase plus, and then uh, less than zero uh, for home ready first. Okay. Um, you can't get cash back. So basically we would take that credit and apply it towards discount points to help buy down your rate. So you can see somebody who would qualify for a home ready first with getting seller credits as well could effectively purchase a home for no money out of pocket. And even these other options, you're looking at buying a house for $3,500 or $4,700. Um, so these are really great grant programs. Again, that you don't have to pay back. There's no monthly payment on the grant. You can sell, refinance at any time. Um, and this is just an easy way for you to go ahead and explore what grants you might match with. And then once you do match with those, you can go ahead and apply, schedule a call with us, and then we can verify that grant for you, get you pre-qualified so you can go out and start uh, shopping for a house. Anything you want to touch on in there, Dan, before we uh, move on? Dude, you nailed it. That was fantastic. This is sweet. This is probably one of those things that's going to help us help so many more people because a lot of people just have that that question or concern. I just don't have all the money for the down payment and the this and the that. And the nice thing about this is, you know, guys, we know in the background there's there's probably thousands of down payment assistance programs. I hate to say that mostly they're they're not very good. 
I mean, they'll charge you higher interest rates. You know, they might get you five grand, but you, they might charge you like three quarters or one or one percent higher on your mortgage, uh, uh, you know, excess fees and things like that. So short term, not a bad deal. Long term, it's a disaster. So we look out to try to find you as close to free money as we can get you. And and that's what we got. So mm. how about everybody giving Kyle a little bit of guac? <laughs> oh, God, not the guac. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's go into top Miami's question. Dan, this might be a good one for you. Uh, could you, could you pull up loan sifter and pull this, uh, off screen and then we can circle back to it. Yep. Um, top Miami, you said, I'm looking to purchase my first home with my wife soon. Um, we both have a 680 credit score. Uh, we're looking to buy a multifamily two to four units with an FHA loan. Um, what kind of rates would we be looking at? Hold on one second. I got to get my code and then I can log in. So bear with me a second. And in the meantime, I'll go jump into some other um, questions here. Let's see. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Caleb, how can I optimize my monthly payment by determining whether it's more beneficial to purchase mortgage points or increase my down payment beyond 20%? Um, I have a tool that's designed to do this. Uh, it's down in the description. Um, it's called the Loan Clarity Advisor, and it helps you compare all different types of scenarios, um, whether you want to compare different down payment percentages or paying points. Um, it allows you to look at the long-term cost of those so you can compare them at different points in time. For instance, you can look at which one's cheaper during uh, 10 years, one's cheaper during five years. Um, so it does all that math for you. All the, on, the only other calculators online that do the same thing um, are $100 a month, and uh, I only charge $25 for it. And if you use the code live L I V E, it's t even 20% off of that. So, um, that should be able to help you there. Uh, I got, Dan, I got the answer to that? just in case I got sifter up. Okay. Looking first Sweet. home, my wife, we both have a 680 credit score, 680. And we're looking to buy a multi two to four unit. What kind of rates are uh, top Miami? The one piece of the puzzle that we need, and uh, we're adding this to our questionnaire online when we're doing loan estimate reviews, is what is your monthly gross income, your income prior to taxes and everything being taken out? Because there are benefits if you're in uh, if you're under eighty percent of the median area income in your area. There's sometimes there's interest rate breaks. Uh, for that. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you could provide, you know, what, what your gross monthly income is, that would be huge. And, and then, I'll, uh, I'll put Dan's email. So go ahead and email Dan that, and then Dan will be able to shoot you a, uh, yeah. a better interest rate for that. So interest rate quotes are not something that are great for us to do live. There's lots of yeah. like disclosures and stuff that we have to do that we just can't provide immediately on the spot while also making yeah. sure we get to everyone else's questions. So um, Dan's email is in the chat. It's just dan at the rate And uh, we'll be able to, Dan will be able to reply to you with that. Um, but just, just for a heads up, please don't people ask for rate quotes here. We just can't do it with the correct legal disclaimers live <laughs> while answering other uh, questions. Um, how to use existing home equity in a new construction project. Do you want to take that? Yeah. So we, we have a lot of people questioning this right now. So you, what you need to do is you can get a home equity loan on your current house. Now here's what a lot of people think is they say, okay, my house is worth 300. I owe 250. So I have $50,000 in equity. Well, that, yeah, that is equity, but it's not lendable equity. So the easiest way to do this is take that number, what your house is worth, multiply it by 80%, um, and then deduct out what you currently own on your home. And that will show you kind of a good ballpark what your equity, uh, lendable equity is in your transaction. So now let's say you have lendable equity there and you take it out. You're going to take it out most likely in the form of a home equity loan or a second mortgage. Most people are taking the home equity loans so they can do, uh, they can just, or um, home equity line of credits so they can kind of cut those checks when they need it. Uh, that payment will be included in your overall debt ratio, not you know, the current balance of your home equity loan, the total of it. So let's say you get a $100,000 home equity loan, but you've only used 10,000, doesn't matter. We're still gonna calculate the debt ratio based on a $100,000 home equity loan, meaning if you maxed it out, what those payments would be. But that's the, that's the easiest and most efficient way to do that. Um, if you need a home equity loan, we can help you with that as well. 
Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, let's see, uh, ZL, I have a VA loan. Oops. I have a VA loan already. Will that interfere with me getting a conventional or FHA loan with a co-buyer? Uh, um, no, as long as with VA, they expect you to live in the home for at least 12 months um, before you move out and rent it out. So if you're selling it, that's fine. You can sell it anytime. If you're going to move out of your current VA loan home and then uh, rent it out, you really need to be in there for at least 12 months. So it doesn't look like uh, any sort of like occupancy fraud. Um, so the only thing to consider is if you're keeping that loan, it will be included in your debt to income ratios. Um, but other than that, you'll be all right. Uh, Gene Spirational, uh, North Dallas area. Th wait, did we cover this already? No. Uh, $350,000 budget, work from home. Two options for me, an older home in my preferred area or a newer home on the edge of Metroplex. Uh, any opinions? That's a better question for uh, a realtor, I think, in your local area, uh, who might, might be able to guide you on some of those. Right. Uh, some of those. So yeah, the, uh, you need. You really need to dissect those specific areas. And I, I live in Chicago. De, uh, Kyle lives in Ohio. We don't know your local market, and we're, so we're not going to be the experts to talk to on that. We try to stay away from home values and you know where they're going to go and everything because we just don't know. Um, and we're, we're adamant about that. You know, we're, we're here to help you guys and assist you if and when you d decide, you know, you do want to buy a property, uh, real estate, and we're here to help you with that. But we're not here to kind of talk you in or out of it or anything else or give you any advice when it comes to, you know, what kind of house. That's all your, your own preference. Uh, Eddie, you said if I go with USDA uh, 502, which is direct, um, which is income dependent and then get married down the line, would I keep my 4.5% interest rate? Um, USDA Direct, uh, I don't believe will change the interest rate over time. However, since USDA Direct is only through USDA, um, it's just not a program that most lenders are going to be aware of. It's something that you'd probably want to talk with USDA directly about. Um, let's see, we covered Caleb's question here. Uh, Angel, you said, can you cover buying a house using a 401k home loan for down payment assistance? Um, it's pretty easy. You can get a 401k uh, loan. Um, you just need to check with uh, whoever's holding your 401k um, that you're able to use those funds and pull out a loan for it. Um, sometimes there are requirements uh, on there. Um, with 401k loan, it's not required that the monthly payment is included in your debt to income ratio. Um, so that's really nice. The only thing I would consider with 401k loan is that keep in mind that having that loan um, is going to prevent your balance from your investment balance from growing into the future. So if you're banking on your 401k for being a substantial portion of your retirement, um, really make sure you have a plan to put money back into the 401k to pay down that loan. Otherwise, you're going to be pausing uh, the, re the growth you can get um, for your retirement in the future. I just don't want your you know, short-term decision of buying a house um, to get in the way of any future retirement plans. Uh, Steffi, good afternoon. Buying in San Antonio, Texas in the next few months as a first time buyer, would I still be eligible for a grant if I've already saved the down payment? Uh, certainly. Yes, you can. There's no requirement on uh, how much, um, money you have. There's no, you can have a million dollars and still, uh, use these grants. Um, any grant programs for North Carolina, South Carolina. Yes, uh, the OnePlus program works in North Carolina and South Carolina. So even if on the grant tool, even if you click no here, um, that doesn't disqualify you from everything. We still have the OnePlus grant that works in all of the US. Um, so that will be uh, probably the best option for you. Um, how's the Oklahoma market doing? Um, we recommend looking into Altos. Uh, let me pull this up here. If you go to da, 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 Altos Research, um, go up here and then click Market Reports, and then click Run a Report. You can put in your uh, the areas that you're looking at. We recommend looking at like different uh, neighborhoods, kind of small sections. Don't look at a huge area of a big city. That doesn't give you a lot of info. Start looking at little pockets, little zip codes, um, and we'll start to, start to tell you the market action in those neighborhoods and where it's trending. Is it going more towards a seller's market or is it going more towards a, a buyer's market? Uh, here you go, Dan. Uh, how does the amount you put down impact your PMI rates? Um, does one shop for PMI rates? 
Nope. So what happens is, uh, I'll answer it specifically, the more money you put down and the higher your credit scores, the lower your PMI. Uh, so what happens is when we're working on your loan, that's one piece of the equation that we actually work on behind the scenes as well, because there's multiple uh, PMI companies that, that can be used. You can't choose or you don't choose. Uh, basically, we choose it on, you know, for, on, on behalf of you. We just take the lowest premiums uh, because there's... It, it's it's the same product, the same everything. So we want you to just pay the lowest possible fee that we can possibly find you because there's no mm -hmm. difference between PMI. So the the higher your credit yeah. score, the more you put down, the better off you are. Um, have you guys covered the mortgage credit certificate program? Um, no. So those uh, are only available through like local um, HFAs. And the benefit I remember, if I remember correctly, is only up to like $2,000 a year. Um, so just it's not super beneficial to us, um, at least it seems, um, for the amount of work involved with getting involved with those H, uh, HFAs. Um, Amanda said, what info do we need to know about what to avoid uh, either in the home realtor lender or any part of the process? That's a big net. Um, <laughs> warning signs that something is too good to be true. Actually, it's a great question. And that's why we, we love doing consultations because people always ask, they have those standard questions. Is it a hard pull? Is it a this? Is it a that? So I'm going to briefly go through here real quick, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. It won't be long. You can even put up a one minute ticker if you want. And I'm going to try to cover this and then also, you know, give you cons areas that you should be concerned about that a lot of people don't. Uh, so let's go through it. The home, you got to love the house. That's it. Get an inspection. Don't waive your inspection. Even if you're going through the place and you love it and everything else, get an inspection because you're looking at the face you know, value of things and you don't know what's behind the door. You know, you don't know what's behind the closet. You don't know if there's mold or anything. Realtors. That's a huge one. Um, we do offer a service. Uh, it's free to you. You don't have to use it. We'll, we'll help vet realtors in your area. We'd love to, you know, you guys to take advantage of that. But what I would look in, in a realtor is just look up their ratings. Um, you know, most of them are going to have great ratings. But you ever notice, and I hope I'm not ticking anybody off here. You ever notice the realtor's picture never matches them when you meet them? Just, it's just weird. Um, so you want somebody full time, check their ratings. You know, you, you might even know somebody that's used them in the past. So, be, you know, watch that. Lenders, many of your realtors are going to say, hey, I, I don't know, you know, Dan and Kyle, or I don't know these people, please use my person. You know, you don't have to. That's actually called steering. In many cases, there's a fin financial thing probably going on in many of those cases that you don't know about in the behind the scenes. So I'm always a proponent of, you know, using, you can try them. Um, but, you know, always reach out to us with the quote that you're receiving. So we get a lot of quotes every day. Uh, I'm going to touch on that here in a second. But any other parts of the process? When it comes to the lending side, here's this is what we know the most about. Please get it in writing. And here's what I'm going to ask you guys. We get we have people every day that they're they want to get 200 quotes because they want to make sure they're getting the best rate in town. Here's I got you a challenge. OK, go out there and get your best quotes, the best ones you can get. Make sure your, your mortgage advisor understands you're going to have somebody review this. OK, so make sure that they're giving you their best foot forward. All right. So then when you get that loan estimate, send it to us. Give us an hour or two to review it and get back with you, okay? But here's, here's what I want to get to, to with this because I work with, with borrowers every day and I work with them for months and months and months. And I work, they call me every day and so forth. And then at the last minute, I got them locked in. We're all good to go. And then at the last minute, they're like, well, so-and-so called me and they're like 500 bucks cheaper. I'm going to go with them. Okay, so why don't we do this? Use those other companies to get the best rate in town because we go a little over and above. We'll talk to you morning, noon, nights, weekends, evenings, whenever you need us. We're there to help educate you guys through the process. What's tough is when we do all this work with you for a month and then you find somebody that's 100 bucks cheaper and you go with them. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do is get the best quotes you can get. Send it to me. OK, so you, you can work on that for two weeks if you want. Send it to me. If I can find you better, please go to please use us because that company, if you go back to that company now saying, OK, this company offered me this. Well, they did. Then obviously they didn't give you your best fet, uh, foot forward out of the gate. 
So please do that beforehand and then reach out to us. You're going to get a lot of things like I had a friend actually apply this morning and I just put in their application now and everything else. They had somebody from a company that shoots stuff in the air and they offered them a rate at 599. And I said, there is no way in the world you're going to get 599. Well, yeah, they're going to get 599 with 11,000 in, in, in uh, points. So these are the things that the lenders, a lot of lenders don't tell you. I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you the points, the fees, the this, the payment, whatever else. And I'll tell you, I'll work with you in evenings, weekends, or whatever you want. Please stay with us. That's all we ask. So the biggest thing is don't, don't waive your inspections. We use a qualified vetted realtor, however you want to vet those. And then when it comes down to the lender, you know, get some quotes out there or whatever, give us a shot. Okay, we're, we do this right on our consultation calls. You can call us, you can text us, you can email us. We're, you're, we're accessible to you guys. Don't just chase somebody that's like, oh, you can give me that rate. Please know the whole story. Because again, the analysis last night was a friend of mine was being quoted. And she's like, Dan, they're killing you. I'm like, okay, how much are they cost? Are they charging you? She's like, I, I don't think anything. They came back with 11,000 in fees. I'm like, okay. So there's where it's coming from. So they're not always yeah, going to be usually convenient. Yeah. That's it. That, that's, what I would, that's what I would highly suggest. Danny said, uh, hey, guys, currently in New York, and I'm not eligible for first-time home buyer, but I'm considering um, buying a property. What are my options? Um, any grants or programs besides uh, available besides conventional? Uh, let me pull this up here. Um, we do have down payment assistance on FHA. Um, however, it's not... Uh, you know, down payment assistance usually is going to increase the rate versus a grant. Um, let me see the one in New York. Let's see if this works in New York here. Um, and then I'll jump back into this. Uh, Dan, do you want to take this one from Trevor? Do you see interest rates going down this year? Um, or are the inflation numbers coming out going to push the rate cuts out to next year? No. Nope. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. And I, I don't know if I'll get your application, but your application is going to be reviewed by me, David, or Alan. So one of us, that, that's our whole staff, basically. So you're not going to a huge call center. You're going to work with one of us. And I'm here every day. So if you ever get, you know, you can't get a hold of your loan officer for some reason or whatever, reach out. Just shoot me an email. Kyle, put that up there. Just go to our website. Call me. Just call me. All right. So rates. Here's what I'm expecting. You have saw rates, in, uh, inflation. It, it, we'll talk inflation now. So about a year ago, inflation was about 9%. Currently, it's right about 3.1%. The Federal Reserve wants it at 2 I don't think it's going to go to 2 I think it's going to go to about 25 3%. It's just a different world out there today. Uh, so that being said, I, this is one of the things that's, that I'm kind of a geek about. I watch every possible news event, whatever. I'm just relaying to you guys what the markets are telling us, folks. I'm not, you know, just trying to fear monger you or... or, or paint everything rosy. I'm just letting you know what the facts are. So this week, Federal Chairman Powell uh, sat in front of a couple of committees and he says, you know, we're not looking for any the data to get much, much better. That's key. Not a much better, just a little bit of ease. We want the consistency that the inflation numbers are staying where they are. And they've been there. So I watched a, a PIMCO. PIMCO is the, the basically, I think it's the world's largest bond uh, company. And they came out, the, one of the former people that uh, used to sit on, sit on the, the big it was a big honcho there. He came out today and said the Federal Reserve should be uh, cutting rates or at least proposing to cut rates at the June meeting because everything's coming in in line to what they're expecting. He did make one comment on something, and I'm doing a bunch of research in the background now, right now to, to figure that out, you know, what his analogy was, and I'll, I'll be posting that. But I'm expecting rates uh, to be about 6.5% this year. Uh, they might dip a little bit more if inflation comes tumbling down. But the, the biggest piece, if you go through the analysis of inflation right now, you look at insurance is up like 25%. You, you have pockets of the, the equation that's going way up. You have oil uh, taking off a little bit right now as well. But everything else is starting to subside. So again, I'm expecting them to cut rates uh, Maybe start probably starting in June. Not they have a meeting next week. They're not going to do anything next week, but starting in the June meeting, they'll probably start to cut, and they they're expected to cut three to four times. And that is from the Federal Reserve telling us that, and that's from analysts all over the country. Now the ones that are telling you they're not going to cut and they're actually going to increase rates are probably YouTubers out there that basically are just they're they're hopefully they're making enough money uh, fear mongering to you guys than actually providing you the facts. So that's my expectations right now. I expect rates to kind of stabilize right here. I don't think they're we're, we're not going to continue the year at 7%. We should be in the 6% ranges this year. And maybe there might be in the five high fives next year. But 
I'm expecting the six mid six ranges all year. Um, so Denny's for your question in New York for not being a first time buyer. Um, if you do go to the tool up here, the grant finder. Um, so I went ahead and pull up, hello, go away. Uh, I went, if you I went ahead and put this in, if you go and look in here, New York city does qualify. Um, now what you have to then do is look up your current address on the geocoder. And remember, this is not where you're going to buy. This is where you currently live. Okay. So if you currently live in one of these, um, then that can help qualify you for two of the grants. So what you'll want to do is put in your current address into the geocoder. I have the link right here. Enter your geo ID and then it will uh, show you if you qualify. So um, that's going to be probably the best option. The one plus works um, even if you're not a first time home buyer and does work in New York City again. But you do have to check the geo ID to make sure um, that it qualifies. The one and downside mine, to one. Sorry. sorry about that. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, the one downside the to uh, one plus is that it does have a max loan limit of 350,000. So um, use the, the grant finder here. It's kind of designed to help you sort all this out. Um, and so that's probably going to be the, the first place I would look for that. Uh, would you have, yeah. I, if you can pop that back up, I just want to, if, if you can kind of show the first, I, I run these every day folks, cause every, every consultation call I get, every person that applies, every person, we run through this simulator. If you go through the geo code, I just want to show people, um, exactly what you're looking for because Kyle and I was talking about this several times during the week and he changed the verbiage on number two and number three through there just to help it, mm. you know, help a little bit better. Oh, you know what? You need a specific address, right? Yeah, um, let me pull this off screen so I can just double check that I okay. don't um, I don't dox myself. It, it's there, but there you're going to get about this much data. If you guys can see me, you're going to get a ton of data. You specifically have to look for the verbiage that he has uh, written in in number step number two. So please yeah, can, look at that verbiage. You'll it find it. It's there. So. Again, it's your current address, not where you're buying, where you currently live. Uh, so go to the census geocoder um, and you put in an address. So I'll just put in our, our bank's um, oh, headquarters perfect. address. Um, get results. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Find the census tracks heading. So I'm going to scroll down through here. Um, something that I could do as well. There we go. Census tracks. Next, what I want to do is copy and paste the census tract geo id so i would come through here geo id copy and then i come here and paste so that's Perfect. all there is to it um so it's Thanks. really not not too terrible the first time the first time i tried to run it i called kyle and i'm like dude there's five thousand <laughs> things on here that said geo so he yeah was, he if, was, it, if there was an easier answer. process i would i would do it but um for whatever reason, whoever decided to make these grants based on geo IDs uh, really added an extra headache to things. Um, how much better of a rate is possible with a down payment of 30% versus 35%? You're going to find almost no difference um, in interest rate at a 750 score. Uh, I went ahead and looked up the chart, the LLPA chart on the back end um, before this question. So you're not really going to find a difference there. Um, Amanda, how much knowledge about the process do I need to have? I think a lot of people... Uh, over, what's the word? Over educate themselves. Maybe that's, uh, I think a lot of people feel like they need to know every single thing possible. Um, but really keep in mind, so most people are buying a house based on almost no information. Um, and they get the process done. They get a good deal. They find a house that they really like. And so don't feel like you have to be an expert to make it all work. Um, that's why experts exist. And our, you know, the, the reason we make content um, is hopefully that, that you can see that we're knowledgeable and we can be experts that work alongside you. You don't have to be a loan officer to be able to get a loan. Um, and I have a resource that really contains almost everything you need to know. If you just click start here on the Win the House You Love website, this timeline walks you through the whole process. Um, so I explain everything that happens step by step um, for people who are like, just give me everything that I need to know all at once. Um, this is every single thing in the timeline here uh, that's going to be helpful for you. So I would suggest that as like a, a really good starting point. Um, she did make feel a comment down, down there. Does the realtor know everything else? Please don't rely on that. I'm just telling you. Yeah, we're, maybe we're, not the we're, realtor. <laughs> we're kicking, uh, Kyle and I are kicking around an idea of creating like a realtor 
kind of YouTube and, and live event things because I think realtors there's a lot of knowledge that they they could acquire from learning more about the mortgage process and i think that would make the the process for everybody much smoother um, i'll leave it at that do, 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 do. let's see what other questions we have uh derek you said i got pre-approved from lennar mortgage since we're looking at a new build from lennar um, at what point do we shop around rates to give them a competitive offer um do you want to take that Here's, here's what is kind of my pet peeve, and I'll leave it at this. The, the Lennar mortgage, they're going to tell you they cannot lock you in until 30 days prior to close. Okay, So what they're going to do is they're going to have you go out there and get great quotes and do this and do that and do all kind of other stuff. Then at the last minute, you're going to come and you're going to give them that quote. They're going to do one of two things. They're going to just say, no, nope, we can't do anything, or they're going to throw something at you just to, to, just to keep your business. Ask them if you can lock in now. OK, um, here's what I'm going to start asking my the people that are building homes. I'm going to say, you know, it, I'll lock you when your builder's ready to lock you. I'm not trying to discourage that. But what, what's happening on our end is we're locking people. We're educating the people. We're locking them in, tracking these rates for them. And then at the last and we do this for months. And then at the last minute, Pulte will come in or Lenar will come in and say, oh, you're getting that offer. I will do that and we'll give you twenty five hundred bucks. So just stick with us. And then we lose it. And we've spent three months educating you, walking you through, helping you with your credit scores, edu educating you on your down payment assistance and so forth. So what we're going to put probably implement is we'll, we'll lock in when the, your, your uh, builder will lock in and then send us their quote and let's see if we can beat that. We're going to turn the tables a little bit. Uh, and I think, I think it's going to really pay off for us as well as you guys out there. Uh, Angel said, uh, spoke to Alan, um, who's on our team. Didn't know it was just, uh, y'all three. Well, there's also a, a David and Don too. Um, makes me feel better. It's just y'all, uh, you should get him on your videos. Um, you know, I don't know what, would Alan ever want to come on the videos? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. He might, but he, yeah, he he likes being behind the scenes, and he's I've known yeah. him for like twenty years. He's an awesome guy. I, I am working on a um, I'm working on an kind of entirely new website that hopefully will make it a little bit easier to see. So my goal is to put in like a whole team page and to kind of see you know, uh, it's who it is. We're like a, we're a local mortgage company. We just have to be on happen to be on YouTube. We're not some like we don't have this huge call center with a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, it really is a, just a handful of us uh, helping you all so out. I, so I had a, this, this is a common theme. Like last night we had a contract come in from New York and the, the uh, realtor is adamant. They do not want to use us as the lender. And the reason why is we're not local. Okay, so I called them last night and we can get, I mean, we, it, we hit it off great, but it's like, okay, I can give them this, I can offer them this, I got this grant program for them, and they're like, oh, okay, we're good. So a lot of people just don't know us. Well, you know, I, I have no problem picking up the phone, talking to you with your realtor, ed educating on who we are, what we do, and how we do things, and how much volume we do, and how much experience we do. Then usually from there, we don't have a problem at all. Mm hmm uh let's see dan you got a little troll in your chat over there uh the, the grant finder makes homes more expensive because of inflation uh Except, i yeah, they, I'm they a, i appreciate that. that you think that we're yeah. big enough to have any dent in the national housing market <laughs> um I, i'd like to understand because that that person they, they do comment a lot and i love comments but what I what I would like is just some substance behind it. Like the the comment, you can bring up the comment if you want. It says Grant Finder makes homes more expensive. You guys on the chat over there, you guys, is, or do you think that the 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 uh, Grant Finder is going to help or push up home prices uh, and increase inflation? So, um, but I, I'd love if you if you're a troll or you you kind of you know pound me every day on YouTube. I ask a lot of these people, hey, would you like to debate? Um, it's funny cause I never get any responses back because they yeah, really the, they'll, they'll pop up something like this and then that's about it. So, um, I will say the, if, if the underlying, buy, please don't buy, you know, the underlying programs are of like one plus purchase plus home ready first are going to make up such a fractional part of the national 
mortgage supply, that it will just simply have no impact on home prices. It's going to have no impact on the mortgage market um, because the, there's just such a small portion, a fraction of what's happening in the national mortgage market. Um, so I, I know it's easy for people to kind of be like, that's why there's a problem. There's more data on what's actually happening in the housing market other than just anecdotally seeing things and pointing fingers. Um, so like Dan said, it's it's more interesting to come to the table with some substance um, if we're going to have yeah. a conversation about it. Uh, and I don't ever yell at anybody. I don't call you out or whatever. I usually ask, why do you say that? Why, why would you say that the um, it's going to cause inflation? And if you if you're still on here, please post. I'd love to hear or shoot me an email. I'd love to open up some dialogue with you. And if you can prove me wrong, God bless you. But we always I always say this. I, I don't care if you're buying the house, folks. Um, we'd love to help you if that's what you've decided at some point. We're not if 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 we had the ability to talk you into buying a house, you probably got some problems. <laughs> I'll put it that way. And that's probably not what I should say, but don't let anybody talk you into buying a house or not buying a house. That is your priorities. Okay. But if you want to buy a house and you want to kick around the numbers and you want help with this, reach out to us. We'd love to help. Uh, Jeff said, can you tell me a little bit about how our schedule needs to look in order to help qualify on our next loan application? Um, Jeff, can you let me know what do you mean by your schedule? Like your, like your availability? Schedule E. Schedule oh. e. <laughs> I just thought it was like a typo. I... <laughs> <laughs> At first I did too. And I'm like, I went to the next, then I'm like, E. Um, uh, that makes so, more sense. Go for it. Is, is E, I, I just went blank. Is E business, self-employed or rental income? Uh, it's going to be uh, supplemental income and loss. Here, so for a business. Okay. So uh, it's going to be for Jeff, like rental, here. real estate, royal royalties, partnerships, S corporations, estates, trusts. Okay. So here, here's how that comes into play. Um, a lot of people, a lot of times when we talk to, especially like truck drivers and that, they'll be like, okay, my, my income is about 300,000. But then when we get their tax returns, it's about 50 grand and maybe not that extreme. What happens is you have to take, what is your net profit? Your net profit. Okay. You can add back depression and depletion. That's about it. So you take your net profit, you add back depreciation and depletion. You take a two-year average, divide that by 24, and that's your monthly income. Uh, that's the easiest way to explain that. So, you know, if you're going to write off, if you're self-employed, a lot of people just, you write off everything and anything. If you're looking to buy a house in the next year or two, you limit that. And I know you can go absolutely crazy with it, but try to limit that because uh, you can actually you know, write off your income to almost zero in, in a lot of cases. So yeah, just be careful on your write-offs. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see here. Inma, do you accept uh, one year tax returns for self employed? I found a lender who accepts one but want to see if they can be beat. Um, if any lender can say uh, one year of tax returns, all lenders will be able to accept a one year of tax returns. So, one year of tax returns can be um, accepted if you've been in business for five years or longer and if the underwriting software approves it. So basically the underwriting software will come back and say, um, we can use one year of tax return instead of a two year average of tax returns. Um, and that's the underwriting software that's used nationally uh, and isn't specif specific to just one lender. So again, if one lender can do it, every lender in the, uh, the US can do that as well. Can you hop um, back to Josh real quick? Because I want to make sure we answer his question precisely. Josh. He's saying it's rental. He's, it's rental income. Mm -hmm. Yes. Josh, the yeah. easiest way to do this is there's actually a, like an Excel spreadsheet that, that breaks down your rental income. Uh, you put in the, the gross receipts, your total expenses, then you allocate uh, some numbers, and then you have a bottom line profit. Just Google it. Google Fannie Mae uh, rental analysis or something like that. You'll find a, an Excel spreadsheet and you just do it yourself. Just take, just grab your Schedule E, sit it there next to the, your Excel spreadsheet, just fill in the numbers, and the bottom line is going to tell you if you have a profit or a loss. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, Josh said, what are some first-time homebuyer grants I should look into? Um, we covered a little bit earlier in the stream, so we just have this new uh, tool. Um, they're just, I'm just calling it Grant Finder. So you just go to winthehouseyoulove.com, go to Grant Finder. Oops, that's the wrong one. Grant Finder. Um, and then you go through here and answer these questions. 
And I'm just going to answer these really quickly because we did cover this. And I'll make a video here in the next uh, week or two. Um, and then what ends up happening, once you're done with this, I'll put in some of these sample info here. It will then show you uh, what grants you can qualify for. And if you can't qualify for one, um, which one would be... Uh, why you couldn't qualify for it. Also, no one's skipping questions on purpose. There's a lot of questions. We can't answer all of them. We're trying our best. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is where it's going to be the best place for you to take a look at your grants um, here. Um, okay, let's jump back in here. Uh, would you advise hiring an inspector from start of build to finish instead of just the final inspection? picture from start that i mean basically you have to give real, that's what your builder is going to do they have foremen they have all kind of am i reading that right an inspector mm -hmm. from start of build to finish instead of just the final inspection they're going to have to pass all kind of codes and everything else so i guess you could i, I never i've never heard of it put it that way because why, um, why you have an inspection done on a, an existing house is you want to see if there's anything wrong. Um, you're you're hoping on a new build that the county, all the the people that come out and give you know, they, they they'll have to ish, get you, get a permit, for example, to put in the electrical. Then the the city or the county is going to come out inspect all the electrical work before they pass it. So you're going to have basically every piece of that construction part's going to be inspected at some point, probably by your local government to to clear it for. Uh, occupancy permits. So that's why I don't, I don't, me personally, I wouldn't have one done if I was building a home, but I always have them done with, on the houses I buy when they're pre existing. Uh, all right, we got to do a super speed round here. Again, nobody's skipping questions. There's a lot of questions here. We can't answer all of them. If we did, we would never be off of this live stream. Um, so uh, California currently have any worthwhile grants. Um, I would look into Cal HFA is probably going to be your best option. Uh, if you're trying Dream for All, Good luck. <laughs> yeah. uh, dream for all approval rate is going to be Buy a lottery. Um, ticket. You're going to have the same be, chance of winning the lot, a lottery ticket than you are probably the, the Cal Hefa lottery. Um, I'm self-employed. I have a 1099. I only have one year to show. I have a good realtor who was able to find a lender. They'll accept one year, but it's rare. The only time. Um, so like what I talked about with the five year being in business and one year tax return, you can only get approved for having one year of self-employment history. Um, if what you were doing previously as W2 income, um, was in the same line of work, if it wasn't in the same line of work, it's just not possible to be able to use that income with self-employment. Um, and if there is, I'd be very curious to hear what that program is because, uh, that would really be a nice warning signal for where we're headed, um, if that's the case. That's, and that would be news to us that you can get that done. However, you might be able to get that done with, with a, what they call a non-QM program. So you, you're you most likely not going to be able to get approved FHA or conventional. You're going to be, it's a non-QM product that might be, might require you to put 10, 15, maybe 20% down. But if you have, if they're, if they're saying they're doing this as a conventional or FHA loan, I would get a second opinion. Just let me know. Um, Requirements for one plus mortgage. Um, I have this on my channel. I actually have two videos about this. Um, there's this one here, the uh, new 1% down conventional loan. Um, so that's going to cover all the guidelines. And then I have another follow-up video that is right here. Um, so both of these videos are going to be a good option showing you all the ins and outs of those two programs. Um, and is it better than FHA? Yes. Uh, you get 2% of a completely forgivable grant um, versus FHA, you don't get anything. Um, so I would definitely do that over an FHA loan. Um, what's less expensive, buying, remodeling, or building a house? It really just depends on the situations. Um, it's There's no one answer to that, unfortunately. Um, I would only look into remodeling and building if, you have, if you're comfortable with the experience and have extra money. Um, I feel like a lot of times people look into remodeling and building and they, uh, don't realize how expensive it's going to be. Those costs are going to grow more than you anticipate um, with remodeling and building. And those really are for people, I think, who are comfortable with their budget and have quite a bit of money to be able to throw around, have, you know, have at least six months um, of an emergency fund before you look into those options. But as far as what's less expensive, there's no way for us to give you uh, the answer to that because it's there's so many things that could happen in the, each of those uh, situations. 
Um, doo -doo -doo. Victor, I recently sold an investment property, um, but we're looking into purchasing a first home within the next six months. Um, would I qualify for a first time home buyer requirement? Uh, a first time home buyer is someone who hasn't been on title to a home in the past three years. Um, so if you just sold an investment property, uh, you wouldn't be able to qualify as a first time buyer. However, not all of those loan programs require you being a first time buyer. So, um, you'll be, uh, you can still qualify for one plus, uh, in that circumstance. Um, Simper apparatus. Uh, lots of builders are cutting corners and permits are ex are not exhaustive. I vote yes on inspections during the build. Interesting. And if that if that would make you more comfortable, please do it. Um. Let's see what else. Uh. Just checked out your Grant Finder tool. Amazing product. I love how it tells you the amount before and after the credit will be due. Uh. Cool. I'm glad you like it. Um. So uh, there's plenty of ways that you can work with us and ask us questions. You can schedule a call at winthehouseyoulove.com. Um, and then also on our site, there's an option for you to ask a question. So if you just have a question, just click I have a question first. Um, and then that will come to us and we'll reply with a video. Uh, but we do these lives uh, every single week, same time, same place, 3.30 Eastern. Um, and we would love to see you on the next one. So thank you all for being here. Feel free to reach out to us again, ask us a question, schedule a call, whatever works best for you. Uh, and we will see you all next week.